been talking a little bit on the podcast lately about Generation Z and sort of what they have in store for us politically and also how rare it is to have uh, young people identify as conservatives or sort of dissent from, I guess, the prevailing uh, media narrative, uh, et cetera. And I, uh, a couple years ago, became acquainted with Kellyanne Brooking. She had actually reached out to me. She was 12 years old at the time. Uh, and she became really outspoken about what was happening in the city of Seattle, about some of the political decision making, and about what was happening in schools during the pandemic. Well, Kellyanne uh, has now uh, started to do a bunch of things since then. She has her own digital show. Uh, she's an ambassador for Turning Point USA. Uh, and I invited her on to talk about what it's like to be now a 14-year-old conservative uh, and also some of the controversy that has come her way as a result. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kellyanna. I'm a 14-year-old political strategist. I am a youth campaign advisor for the future governor of Washington State, Sammy Bird. I am a Turning Point ambassador and youngest Turning Point hub president. Okay, let's start with that first one. What does it mean to be, so for, I thought you had, when did you turn 15? February. February, okay. How long have you been doing this sort of in the political realm? Yeah, so I got involved in politics when I was 12. In the summer of 2020, we had Chop Chaz, as you know, and it's actually really funny because what got me and my dad really started in politics was you. We saw your oh, interview. Oh, so yes. your dad's out here. That's yes, nice. he's right out there. We were watching when um, Antifa and the radical left was literally harassing you and following you and that was insane because growing up I was never really taught about politics or anything because nobody really teaches their kids about that I was just taught to respect those who help and make our lives safer and during that time that happened to be police officers so when I saw that this was happening to police it wasn't even a political thing with me it was just morally wrong and the way that local journalists and news anchors and papers as you saw were covering it they were glamorizing it they were saying that it's okay because it's taking place in the name of equality and social justice. And even as a 12 year old, I knew that was wrong and I needed to speak out against it. And so and I'm, I'm gonna um, question you on this a little bit because I've been hesitant to have you on because yes. of your age. Yes. Uh, I know you've been, you've been very, you know, Brandy, I wanna come on your show. Yes, I was like, I've okay, been, good. I've yeah, been yeah. waiting. But there's a reason <laughs> is because, you know, you never know with kids these days, kids these days, <laughs> if it's their parents. I mean, your dad's mm -hmm. here. Is he forcing her to talk politics and be conservative? I mean, how much of this and this activity is you and how much of it is your parents? Yeah, that's a good question from both sides. People always tell me that I'm a talking point and I don't know what I'm doing because of my age and I can be overlooked at times. But with my dad, he actually questions almost everything I say, even if he agrees with what I'm saying. He'll just randomly debate with me just to kind of get a different point of view and try to challenge me on those things. So it's definitely not just my parents. So at 12, I mean, what did you say? Like, I, I, hey, I want to go do what? Yeah, so we actually went to Chop Chaz and we used to go to Seattle all the time because when I was younger, Seattle used to be a safish area and I didn't really realize what was going on. But when liberal policies were implemented, we would go there and take pictures and look around. And it was really disheartening to see the change. Even as a young kid, I knew that was wrong. And we would go out there. And when I saw Chop Chaz, it was really eye opening because I didn't really know anything about politics. And then I read the book Never Play Dead by Tommy Lair. And that's when I really realized that what's happening in Seattle was absolutely a political thing. And so where'd you go from there? How'd you go from being really frustrated by what you were seeing uh, into putting that into action? Yeah, well, social media is a great way to go about that. I got involved in Turning Point and our hub went to local police stations and just kind of gave them words of encouragement. Because during that time when everybody's attacking you, I can know that can be very overwhelming. So we really wanted to get more involved and really just voice our opinions for support supporting the police from the younger point of view. Yeah, and you mentioned Tommy Lauren. Has that been uh, uh, someone you've looked up to? Yeah, absolutely. I think she's amazing. I think it's awesome to see people in the conservative movement that don't exactly follow every single conservative ideal, and they're okay with disagreeing with people, even in their own party. Like, what, what is one that she um, dissents on that you appreciate? Yeah, well, I think that she's a constitutionalist conservative, and that's what I consider myself as well. Like, she listens to certain music and dresses a certain way, even though that's not traditional for conservatives, as you've seen. Like hip-hop or what? Yeah, I guess so. I think that a lot of conservatives will tell you that you're not conservative enough or you're not Christian enough if you listen to this type of music or if you dress this way, and they want to appeal to those sort of demographic of people. But I think it's okay to disagree with people, even if you share the same political views. She got into some hot water with fellow conservatives for disagreeing on abortion. She takes more of a libertarian stance on abortion. Um, and she got a lot of grief for that position. 
Um, is that something that you and you and Tommy agree on? Well, I am pro people living their life. I am pro people not wanting to wear a mask if they don't want to. I'm pro people not taking the vaccine if they want to. And I think there are gray areas in life that I will never be in in certain situations and circumstances where I really don't think it's my place to decide what people want to do. And I think that Roe v. Wade being overturned is the correct and constitutional decision. And I think the power being left up to the states is the correct choice. So on Tommy, you know, as I said, she's, she's controversial, mm -hmm. um, you know, in Seattle in particular. And do you worry about how much do you worry about? Because you've already been attacked as a 14 yeah. year old <laughs> online and, you know, vilified. And so how, how much are you worried about that attitude towards you the same that, that she gets? Yeah, that's a good question. And what I've realized in politics is it doesn't matter to the radical leftists in Seattle that I'm 14. They will attack me no matter what age I am. When you're speaking out with such different views against the mob, it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter who you are, they are going to attack you. As I've seen, my picture was literally put up around Seattle on those posters when I was supposed to speak at an event that that was absolutely insane. And what I've realized is that you have to have the courage to be disliked. And I think that I've absolutely done that. I've literally, I was kicked out of school for two months for going against the liberal narrative and the liberal mandates. So I'm not really worried about it. It can definitely be overwhelming at times, but I think that what I'm doing is absolutely worth it and I wouldn't change it for anything. You know, are you, so I was a Democrat when I was mm -hmm. uh, in college. You know, I um, volunteered on the campaign of a, a, a Democratic Senate candidate yeah. and my political views have come a long way yeah. in adulthood. <laughs> Because you grow, you learn, you you experience different things. So how open minded are you to the, the the possibility that one day you you might not feel as strongly as you do right now about conservatism? That's a good question, and I don't think I'm going to change my political views. I would Ever? Hope, I would You're hope, 14, so don't. I would hope <laughs> that I change my views on certain things, but overall, I don't think I'm going to have this blue pilled moment. Mm -hmm. um, and what my goal? I'm host of a few words, which is my show. My goal with my show is to have people from all different walks of life and different point of views on. So I think it's good to be open-minded and have, and have those conversations with people, even if you disagree with them, as you've done. How are you so confident you'll never change your political views? You've got like 80 years of life ahead of you. You know, that's a good question, but I'm pretty firm with what I believe in. I think that I'm pretty educated and I'm definitely open to learning more and hearing different sides of the argument, but I don't think that I'm going to have this moment where I just become this raging liberal and change all of my views. Well, raging liberal. <laughs> um, let's talk about schools for a second. Yeah. So you had mentioned, and this is something that you and I have um, exchanged messages mm -hmm. about before. What was it like? Because are you, do you go to a public school now? Yes, I go to a public school. I'm a freshman. So what was it like during COVID for you, I guess, just um, as a student dealing with what other students were dealing with in this state in regards to schooling? Yeah, good question. So I think that even politics aside, online school and being in school during the time of COVID was really hard for everybody. But what I noticed is that when we were doing online school, that's really when I... That was the start of COVID and politics really for a lot of people. So that's when I started speaking out about my views more. And it was interesting how everybody became a keyboard warrior. Everybody was okay with saying these things behind a screen and saying all these horrible things towards me because I was the only one who was outspoken during that time. And then when we, we went back in person, everybody kind of bowed down a little bit and didn't say anything when I'm like, you were literally just saying these things to me online. So I think that during that time when everything was online, everybody got this false hope Hope of encouragement. So you were saying that your fellow classmates were sort of talking poorly about you. Oh, yeah. Or their parents or both. All of it, honestly. It was really weird because even teachers were saying things like that during Zoom meetings. When we would have these little debates online, the teachers would mute me or tell me to be quiet. And one time I was wearing a Make America Great Again hat during a Zoom meeting. And the a student put in the chat like, her hat makes me uncomfortable. And my teacher was like, could you please take it off? It's making another student uncomfortable. It's really interesting how everybody kind of got very confident behind a screen, but wouldn't say anything in person. So what are, what are your friendships like with, with uh, kids your age? Because conservatism isn't, uh, well, I don't know that it's, I wouldn't say it's a value a lot of kids don't have, but it's mm -hmm. a, a value I don't think they think of. I don't think a lot of kids your age are obviously as involved in politics as you are. So 
what is life like for a 14 year old conservative who's outspoken amongst her peers? Yeah, so during my eighth grade year, it was really difficult. I had hate pages made about me, death threats. People were awful towards me at school. Teachers were awful, awful towards me. I only had a couple friends, and it was a really difficult time. I was definitely ostracized and made fun of and bullied. And I think that it wasn't even that I was my conservative views. It was the fact that I was outspoken when nobody else was. And recently, I've been very fortunate to move out of the Seattle area to more conservative area of Washington. And I don't think that my classmates really understand my views. They just appreciate that I'm speaking out for something and they admire that I have the courage to speak out when nobody else is. So it's really interesting to see when I moved from a super crazy liberal area to a more conservative area and the different climate of people is really nice. Yeah, out there, uh, a lot of their parents probably. Yeah, exactly. It's so nice. Yeah, they've been exposed to it. We're in Seattle. They yeah, haven't. for sure. Do you ever just want to be 14? I mean... Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people ask me that. Whenever I'm on radio segments, people are like, when I was your age, I was focusing on this. And people act as if my life is just politics. Uh, my life is politically themed, but I also have a normal life too. I have friends and I like boys and dances and all these normal things. I don't think I'm giving up my teen years at all for politics. I think that I'm really good at ba balancing best of both worlds. What do you uh, kind of explain a regular week for you right now? Yeah, so I have school. Um, I really struggle in math, so I stay after school for math help. And then sometimes <laughs> I go home and I have to do a radio call. Or sometimes at lunch I have to go to the office because I have a Zoom meeting with One America. It's really all about balance right now. And I'm really excited to see what my high school life holds and balancing all of it together. Talk, talk about this um, gubernatorial candidate who yeah. you are, because I haven't had him on, on the show. I, I, I've ne I had never heard of him until mm -hmm. he announced his campaign. Uh, yeah. Who is he and why are you supporting him? Semi Bird, I am supporting him because I think he is really authentic and he really wants to bring change in Washington state for all people. Because I think that when people run, they usually have an agenda for... If it's a Republican candidate, they just want to help the Republican people and vice versa for liberal people, too. And he really wants to unite all Americans together. And next month in January is really when we'll get the ball rolling more. And I'll know more about what my uh, role holds and what everybody's role holds. And I'm really excited for this opportunity because I think that the youth really deems policy and politics in general as boring. And it's a future old uh, old people issue, as we've heard before. And I think that with this role, I really want to get the youth more involved and realize that even though we're younger, we do have a part in politics and a politics um, and policy affect us more than we might think. How'd you get uh, linked up with him? Yeah, so he's actually a school board member where I'm currently living and we got connected because we've both seen each other on social media and I was at a school board meeting and I really agreed with what he was saying. And so you said, you know, his his goal and, and I'll have him on the show uh, when yes. he gets sort of up and running a little bit more. Um, is to bring people together. Every politician says they want to look at Joe Biden. He said he was going to be the president to unite America. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what kind of policies does he support that you think would bring people together, not push them apart? Yeah, of course. Um, so we're planning on going to Seattle soon because I think that a lot of people in Washington will only focus on the area that they're in. And I think Seattle policies really affect us no matter where we are in Washington because that kind of dictates where we're going. A perfect example, even though I live in a more conservative area now, liberal policies still affect us, such as defunding the police. And he's really focusing on funding the police and giving them more training. Because I think that when the leftists are saying that they want to actively defund the police and they don't really support what they're doing, I think that even though if you disagree with them, more funding would be beneficial. Uh, and so you said you're going to go to Seattle, like he's going to go to Seattle, take yes, his campaign to Seattle? To, yes, and try to appeal to the people in literally the height of all of this liberalness and go to the liberal events and try to agree to disagree. Yeah. So as a, um, you, what, what is the name of your show, The Final Word? or A few, a few words. words. A few words. Yes. Uh, and you kind of do a similar thing that we try yes. to do, and that's be reasonable, right? And at least talk mm -hmm. to people and hear them out. What's one of the um, most interesting conversations you've had in that regard with someone who you just didn't agree with? That's a great question. And I really haven't had a liberal on yet. I've tried. There's certain liberals that really, I've tried. I've reached out. People don't yeah. want to have a conversation. I, I know. Yes, I know. it can be very difficult to get people on. I'm like, please, please, please. I just want to have a conversation. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are scared of like the I got you sort of questions. But that's really not my intention at all. I just want to have a genuine conversation. And I also have a street interview segment called Was It Something I Said? Where I go to different areas when I go on vacations or when I go to Seattle. I have conversations. And that's where I get people to talk to me that have different views. 
I went to DC and we were at a pro-choice rally and there was this girl all decked out in blood and was the most liberal pro-choice girl I think I've ever talked to, but she was really sweet and actually had a great conversation. And I asked her what a stereotype she had about pro-life people was. And she said she didn't have a stereotype. She was saying that if you're pro-life, keep being you, keep doing what you're doing, but I'm going to be pro-choice. And it was a really good conversation. And I wish more people would be like that. So kind of looking, I had, um, I don't know if you saw the interview with Senator Simon Sefcik, yeah, I know who's 22 and was the youngest uh, senator in Washington state history. Unfortunately, he lost. I thought that was a bummer because he's just such a smart guy. And we talked a little bit about uh, Generation Z and their role in politics. Are you Generation Z or are you the next one? Generation Z for now, but I'm sure that when I get older, it will change. Yeah, some people it'll try be to something. Lim- yeah. So... Like I said, I think there's this feeling that most young people are Democrats, or at least they think they're Democrats, right? And um, that's what I always say is I kind of grew out of it. Yeah, (laughs) I'm not a Republican now, but Mm -hmm. I've certainly uh, gone more to the right as I've gotten a little bit older. So what are some conservative principles that you think can effectively bring younger people into the fold if they're messaged correctly? Yeah, that's a great question. And as I was telling you earlier, uh, a lot of young people view policy as boring. I think a perfect example of that would be the border. And I think the border affects us more than we might think. A lot of people think that it doesn't because you don't live in this state or that state. But really, that's an issue that affects all of us because that really goes into other policies as well. And I think another thing that really needs to that will can appeal to younger people is education. We've seen critical race theory that really divides people and pins us against each other and teaches people that if you're this race, you're a victim or if you're this race, you're an oppressor. So I think that if we all from different sides of the aisle could realize that we are all equal and critical race theory impacts us all in horrible ways, that could be really beneficial towards the youth. Did you think Republicans talked enough about education issues in the midterms? I think with the midterms, there were a lot of great candidates, but... We really weren't united. What the Democrats have against us as Republicans is that they are all united. Even if I disagree with what they're saying, they have a good message and they're really great at appealing to the youth. They do the TikTok things and the social media things. It can be really cringy at times, but it works, as we've clearly seen. And the Republicans were all over the place with their messaging about abortion, about the border, about education. I really think that Republicans were not united and that's why we lost. Um, But on the sort of messaging front for Republicans, you know, you have been so involved in talking about what happened with COVID at Mm -hmm. schools, for instance, you just mentioned critical race theory. Did you feel like that was a subject matter that they were driving home enough? No, absolutely not. And and, and why do you think that is? Why do you think they left it on the table? Because I feel the same way. Yeah, I think that the really uh, hot topic for voting for midterms was abortion. And I think that's what both sides focused on more than maybe issues that affect us day to day, because people don't get abortions every single day. The average American doesn't go get an abortion every single day. But education, gas prices, inflation, those are the issues that affects us in our day to day lives. So uh, going back to the Gen Z question, mm-hmm. Turning Point, you're an ambassador for Turning Point. Yes, I am. Um, and so that has been sort of this movement to try to get younger people involved in mm-hmm. conservatism. What does that entail for you being an ambassador for them? Yeah, so I get to go to certain events and events are great because we have Media Row and we get to talk to people from all walks of life. And it can be really disheartening throughout the year when you're a conservative, especially especially in a liberal area or when you're in school, you feel isolated and ostracized. And then when you go to these events, it's really nice to be surrounded surrounded with people who are like-minded and you get to have these great conversations with people who you think you would have never talked to. And it's really amazing. And so uh, that's part of it, being an ambassador is going to these events or is it doing things in in Washington state, in the community or? Yeah. So I was actually president. I'm a president of a hub here in Washington for Turning Point. And when I used to have these meetings, we used to have a lot of active members and we used to go to church events, clothing drives, food drives, as I told you, the police stations. Mm -hmm. And then what I noticed with my little group is that we had probably 15 members and it went down to three members because when these people started joining high school, they became very liberal and very blue pilled and lost those conservative values that they used to have. Well, do you think that maybe they just changed their minds or you think they're being, they're being brainwashed in school? I think that it's a mix of both, mostly brainwashed, because these people don't even necessarily realize what they are doing. They don't even realize that it's liberal per se, but they'll put the pronouns in the bio and the Black Lives Matter and say all of these things, but it's really just mindless and they're following what the crowd is saying to do. So you think they're just following what their friends are doing? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, who are some politicians right now that you look up to? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... 
it can be hard for me to think of some. Too. Yeah, I really, <laughs> I really don't idolize politicians too much, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. What about what's your feeling on Donald Trump? Trump, I think that um, he's a great candidate. I think that instead of focusing on who's going to run in 2024, I'm focusing on what's happening now. And my new role with Semi, I'm focusing on that race. I think that a lot of people get too caught up in the 2024 race. Well, Semi is is 2024. Yes, but I'm working on that now. And I think that a lot of people focus on too much Trump or DeSantis. And there's a lot of in-party division about fighting about who should be the best candidate. Well, you know, we are, like you said, your semi is running for 2024 and looking at the presidential race. Um, you know, Trump, to me, I'd like him to go away, but I know that you've been supportive of him. Do you think he's the kind of candidate who can hold the party together? I think that as of now, a Republican candidate would be great. Not quite sure who should be the best one. I think that at least we have a lot of options compared to the Democrats. If we look at the voting and the percentages for Biden, people in his own party don't even want him anymore. So I think that in the Republican Party, at least we have several great candidates that could run. You're not giving me an opinion on Trump. You don't. Do you want him or you want him to go away? You know, um, I think that he it would be better to have him than a Democrat. You've watched the show enough to know that I usually don't let anybody, not even 14 year olds, get yes, away I with dodging that. my question. I knew this was going to come up. Too. Yes. Well, you know, since you haven't answered directly, I figure I'll just keep trying. Yeah, I see that. I think that a lot of people in the Republican Party and conservative movement idolize Trump in this weird way, not just with Trump, mm. but with candidates in general. That's why it was so hard to answer the question with politicians that I look up to right now, because I really don't idolize politicians. And I think a lot of people put certain Republican candidates on this God sort of pedestal, and I disagree with doing that with any candidate including trump yes yeah. any candidate um let's end here kelliana you know washington state's in an interesting place <laughs> yes. you're obviously supporting a candidate for governor who you like um what are some things that you would like to see done in washington state by whoever the next governor is that you think would make a, a big difference for your future and the future of the state that you live in Yes, speaking out actively against critical race theory, that's an issue that I don't think is going to way, going to go away anytime soon, and that really is impacting the youth in such a negative way. And my really big thing right now is getting the youth more involved. I don't want everybody to think the same as me. I just want people to think in general. And I think that for far too long, the youth has been just following what TikTok is saying to do and what they see is cool on social media. I just really want the youth to think more. And I think that Getting rid of critical race theory, theory or trying to ban that will really go a, a really long way with the youth. Yeah. Anything else you can think of that you want to talk about? I don't think so. I think we've covered all of the hot topics. Yeah. So where can people follow your work and find your work? Yes. Instagram is Kellyanna Brooking. My Twitter is Kellyanna USA. My website is KellyannaBrooking.com and my YouTube is Kellyanna Brooking. And what's the dream for you? Yeah, that's a good question. As of now, I don't really know officially what I want to do. I know that I really like politics and I really like talking. So I'm going to do something in that realm. Well, yeah, you're good at you're good at talking and you're good at talking about politics. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're very impressive. And so I appreciate you coming in and chatting with us and we'll have you back on. Thank you so much, Brandy. I appreciate it. (laughs) 